Welcome to Electronline. Here's our first example of how to use the variation of parameters method to solve the non-homogeneous differential equation. Now, notice that we are starting with an equation that we've seen before. We use the method of undetermined coefficients to solve this equation. And also notice we're starting with a relatively easy one where the coefficients are constants rather than functions of the variable t. The beginning is exactly the same. We need to find the homogeneous part of the solution. So we're going to start with the homogeneous equation. Of course, we expect it to look like this when we're done. We need to find y1 and y2. So we find the homogeneous equation. All we do is set this equal to 0. So we end up with y double prime minus 5y prime plus 4y equal 0. And now we use the characteristic equation. So this looks like r squared minus 5r plus 4 equals 0, which can be factored. So we have r minus 4 times an r minus 1 equals 0, which means the first root is equal to 4 and the second root is equal to 1, which means then that the homogeneous part of the solution looks as follows. It looks like c1 e to the 4t plus c2 e to the t. Now to find the particular solution, since we already know what y1 and y2 are, they're right here, these two functions right there, we now need to find u1 and u2. We know that involves finding the Ronskian. Let's calculate the Ronskian. So the Ronskian of y1 and y2 is equal to the determinant of y1 and y2, which are right here, that would be e to the 4t and e to the t, and the derivative of those, which is 4e to the 4t and e to the t. So that becomes the product of those two, which is e to the 5t minus the product of those two, which is 4e to the 5t, which means you have one of those minus 4, that becomes minus 3, e to the 5t, which is the Ronskian of y1 and y2. And that comes in handy, because next what we're going to do is try to find u1 and u2. If you remember the equation, u1 was equal to the negative of the integral of y2 times g of t dt divided by the Ronskian of y1 and y2. So plugging in what we have, this is negative, the integral of y2, which is e to the t, g of t, which is e to the 3t, dt, divided by the Ronskian, which is minus 3e to the 5t. This is equal to, the negatives will cancel out, I can pull out a 1 over 3, times the integral of e to the 4t divided by e to the 5t, which is e to the negative t, dt. And if we integrate that, we can say that u1 is equal to, of course, we're going to need a negative 1. That becomes negative 1 third e to the negative t plus a constant of integration. Now we can do the same for u2 u2 is going to be equal to the positive of the integral of y1 times g of t dt divided by the Ronskian of y1 and y2, which is equal to, oh, yeah, I have a dt, which is equal to the integral of y1, which is e to the 4t, g of t, which is e to the 3t, divided by the Ronskian, which is minus 3e to the 5t. Of course, we're going to need a dt. I can pull out a negative 1 over 3 times the integral of e to the 7t divided by e to the 5t, which is e to the 2t dt. Of course, to integrate that, we're going to need a 2dt, and we need a 1 over 2 to compensate for multiplying this times 2. And... Do I still have my negative here? Uh, I lost my negative. So make sure I have a negative in there because there was a negative there. So this becomes equal to negative 1 over 6 times e to the 2t plus a constant of integration. And so that would be equal to u2. 
So now that I have U1 and U2, I can go ahead and plug that into my particular solution equation. So I have the particular solution for the differential equation is equal to U1, which is minus 1 over 3 e to the negative t plus a constant of integration times y1, and y1 is e to the 4t, plus u2, which is minus 1 over 6 e to the 2t plus a constant of integration times y2, which is e to the t. Now we just need to clean it up a little, see what happens. So y particular is equal to, multiplying this times this, that would be e to the 3t, so minus one-third e to the 3t plus a constant times e to the 4t. And then here we have a minus, minus 1 over 6 e to the 2t times e to the t, which is e to the 3t plus a constant times e to the t. Now take a look at these two terms right here, an e, c e to the 4t and c e to the t. Since our homogeneous solution already has those two functions in it with some arbitrary constants c1 and c2, if we then add these two terms to that, we're still going to get e to the 4t times some constant and e to the t times some constant, so these will get absorbed in the homogeneous part of the solution, so we don't have to worry about those. That means the particular part of the solution becomes as follows. Y particular is going to be equal to minus one-third e to the 3t minus one-sixth e to the 3t. Of course, when we combine common denominators, that is minus two-sixth minus one-sixth, that's minus three-sixths, or Y particular is equal to minus one-half e to the 3t. And that is the exact same particular solution we found when we use the other method, the method of what we call undetermined coefficients. And so finally, when we combine it all together, we can then say that the solution y is a function of t, which is the sum of the homogeneous part, plus the particular part of the solution, so that would be equal to c1 e to the 4t plus c2 e to the t, minus one-half e to the 3t for the particular part of the solution, and this gives you the general solution of this original homogeneous differential equation. But in this case, we use the method called variation of parameters instead of the undetermined coefficient method, and that's how it's done.